show your support. Like, share and subscribe. British guy and welcome to my Clash of Champions predictions. So here we are folks, the last pay-per-view of 2017 and to be honest going into it not really too fast, they haven't made much of it since Survivor Series, it feels like Smackdown's been coasting a bit which is odd seeing as Raw don't have a pay-per-view until the Royal Rumble and they're in a position to coast probably more so than, than SmackDown are, but there we go. We seem to be in this position most years with the WWE at the moment, and hopefully it will be a good night and we can make the most of it anyway. Starting off with the pre-show, we have a match between the Hype Bros, Mojo Rawley versus Zack Ryder. Obviously, Mojo has just turned heel against Ryder, blaming them for the lack of the team's success. When Ryder came back from his injury, they put the two together after Mojo started to get a bit of a push at the beginning of the year and obviously things just kind of ground to a halt after that. I don't really see any other result other than Mojo winning here, otherwise it completely kills his push dead right from the beginning. I think... They've kind of missed any opportunity they could have ever really done anything substantial with Zack Ryder. So they might as well use him to try and push Mojo a little bit higher up the card. Moving on to the main show now. We have a tag team match between the Fashion Police and the Bludgeon Brothers. Now this seems to be the build to the culmination of the whole 2B angle the the attacks and the trashing of the office and everything this will be the first match that the fashion police have had in a very long time they've mainly just been doing skits and obviously this is the bludgeon brothers first pay-per-view match so again like the mojo rider match i can't see this going any other way than the bludgeon brothers winning and potentially trying to absolutely decimate the fashion police Perhaps the Ascension will come out and try and make the save and maybe get beaten down themselves as well, trying to protect the fashion police. Therefore, making that story a little bit more interesting and also making the Bludgeon Brothers look even stronger in the fact that they were able to easily step over two tag teams instead of just one. Next up, we have the triple threat match for the United States title between Baron Corbin... Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Now, like everyone else, I'm sure, Dolph Ziggler is pretty much only in this to eat the pin. And I think what will happen is Roode will pick up the win here and take the title. And that will keep the program going between him and Baron. Baron feeling hard done by that he lost his title through no fault of his own. And blaming Ziggler. And demanding rematches against Rude in order to get his title back. Maybe they will tease a little bit of something between them in the Royal Rumble just to kind of extend the program rather than doing a, a title match at the Royal Rumble and then moving the rematch to the pay-per-view after the Royal Rumble and potentially even as far as WrestleMania. Next up we have the Lumberjack women's match for the women's title between Charlotte and Natalia. And mainly because there are so many heels on the SmackDown roster at the moment, other than Charlotte and Naomi, the whole locker room are heels, because obviously Becky Lynch is away filming at the moment, so you've got two faces at the top of the card. So putting the belt on Natalia makes absolutely no sense. At least if it stays on Charlotte, they can throw various different challenges her way, keeping it fresh possibly getting her to move through the ranks of the Riot Squad until she gets to Ruby Riot, and they may have a title match between the two of them, possibly, at the Royal Rumble, but they may completely hold off on that 
if rumours are to be believed about a women's rumble match, which I really hope we get to see early next year. But in terms of here, Charlotte has to keep that title definitely, and I don't think there will be a cash-in from Carmella at this point. For the same reason, putting the belt on her is just another heel, and that's not going to help things at SmackDown at the moment. They need to keep that belt on Charlotte and just throw heel challenges her way. Next up, we have the tag team title match between the Usos, the New Day, Rusev and Aiden English, and Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable. And I have a feeling this is going to be very, very messy. The Usos and the New Day have done brilliant work together over the summer. It's a bit of a shame seeing the New Day in this match as well. I think they could have had a decent match against, say, Rusev and Aiden English, the two of them. Possibly even putting Rusev and English over to try and help promote them as a very strong new team. But we're getting what is probably going to be a very, very messy Fatal 4-Way tag match with the eight of them. Um, I hope the belts don't go back to the New Day because we'll just get the New Day Usos continuing their feud and I think that's done now. Rusev and English feel a bit too new to give them the belts yet and I'm really not feeling Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin either to be honest. Although they've been together for a little while they don't really feel like they've done anything and certainly not anything to deserve the titles especially after the excellent work that the Usos and the New Day have done together over the sort of summer and autumn period so because I really don't want the belts to go straight back to the New Day again I am going with a win for the Usos here. Next we have the WWE title match between AJ Styles and Jinder Mahal um, Poor Jinder, really. I think they've completely destroyed him this year. They tried to force him down our throats as this heel champion and just gave him the heel foreign gimmick that just doesn't work anymore, certainly not in 2017. It felt tired 10 or 15 years ago. It's certainly tired now. He won all of his matches the same way thanks to Singh interference, so... He never felt like a credible opponent for anyone because he was always being handed victories by the Singh brothers rather than earning them himself. Um, and then he lost the title just before the India tour, which was what they were building to anyway. He lost whilst out in India to Triple H for some reason. I'm really not sure why. And I have a feeling after this match, AJ will win here. And that will be Jinder pretty much done with. Maybe he can find some kind of success at the sort of United States Intercontinental level next year. But yeah, it's a real shame for him. I am currently at the moment in the process of writing a rebooking video surrounding Jinder Mahal and his 2017. Just booking it in a much more sensible, logical way to try and get him over with everybody rather than shoving him down our throats. Hopefully that will be ready early next year. But in terms of my predictions, definitely an AJ Styles win here. And finally, we have the tag team match of Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens facing off against Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura. And we have two special guest referees in this match, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Now, obviously, if... Zayn and Owens lose this match, they will be fired from not only SmackDown, but from all of WWE, so they won't be able to reappear on Raw the next week, or even go back down to NXT and come back up again after a couple of months. As far as the stipulation in the match is concerned, that will be them out of the company completely. That's obviously not going to happen. There's no way they're going to release those two superstars. They're just too valuable, especially Kevin Owens. I have a feeling that because we've got the two referees in here and they're playing it that Shane McMahon is basically trying to get rid of Owens and Zayn and Daniel Bryan seems to be favouring those two. I have a feeling what we are going to see is Kevin Owens pinning Randy Orton at the exact same time of Shinsuke Nakamura pinning Sami Zayn. And obviously Shane McMahon will count the pin for Nakamura on Zayn and give him the win. 
but at the same time we will get the three count from Daniel Bryan where he sees Kevin Owens pinning Randy Orton so we will get a double count from both referees both teams will be being pinned at the exact same time and the whole thing will just descend into madness it'll be a complete schmoz and then we will have to tune in to Smackdown on Tuesday to find out exactly what is the result of this. Therefore, we don't get the obvious Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are going to win angle because I don't think anyone believes that they're going to actually get fired. We don't have the awful angle of them getting fired and coming back a week later, a la John Cena against the Nexus angle. It kind of avoids both situations. The only way I can really see them getting out of it, in my opinion. So there we have it. They are my predictions for Clash of Champions. Let me know what your predictions are in the comments below. And just before I sign off, a very quick reminder that at 8pm GMT... The second Very British Wrestling Federation pay-per-view will go live on this channel. And this is Highland Hardcore Heaven. Very similar to the Battering Ram setup. So please check that out if you can. But for now, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.